Hi guys, I am Sherry Burbach, writer and artist, and I want to talk about painting large, painting on a big canvas, as big as you can find. Um, some of us don't have tons of space in our studio, and that's why painting on a large canvas can be sometimes a challenge. But I want to tell you, if you can find room to get a large canvas and go outside, um, to do it, it can really transform the way that you experience your painting project. When I'm painting large, um, I feel that it pushes my body in different ways. I'm bending, I'm, you know, reaching, I am taking step, several steps back to look at the canvas. Uh, it really makes me feel like I'm able to step through that canvas into this other world. And that's my favorite thing about painting, right? It's a different world with possibilities and hope. And I love the idea of creating this very large work that can make you feel as if you could almost step through it and go to a different place. Um, painting large has its challenges though. So I want to talk about those. First of all, not all of us have tons of room in our studio or home <laughs> to paint large. So that's one challenge. So if you don't have a lot of room in your home, um, you can do what I do, which is to go outside. Um, as I'm filming this right now, we have a rare, uh, really beautiful April day here in the Midwest, and I'm taking advantage of it. I'm going outside. Um, Painting outside is great because for me, I can make a mess and it doesn't matter. Um, and also other elements when you're outside, um, paint dries faster, which can be a good or bad thing. For me, I feel like it's good because that means I can layer more quickly. Um, it can transport you because you're in a different place than your little room or your studio. Um, you know, when I'm outside, I pay attention to what I hear and see. I'm inspired by nature and I love looking at the, the trees and seeing the different colors of the flowers, hearing the birds chirp. These are all things that when I'm painting outside, I really want to pay attention to. It changes your paint experience. It makes things slow down. It makes you really look at the world differently. So you're not trying to hurry up and paint something. You're really just taking it all in and enjoying it on a different level. For the painting that I am going to show you today, I started with um, just regular acrylic paint. It was golden brand fluid acrylic, which I love using because they dry quickly. They flow nicely. Um, they were really great paint to use on any level of the painting, whether it's the early layers or the final layers. But I especially love them in the beginning layers because they, they flow really nicely. They work well with water. Um, and when I am creating that first layer, I love to use a lot of different drips and a lot of different elements. What you're going to see me do is place the paint on the canvas in kind of this random fashion, but what I'm doing is I usually work in quadrants when I'm starting a painting. So I will do warm colors, then cool colors and warm colors and cool colors. It kind of works out that way for some reason. And of course you can start a canvas any way that you'd like. This is how I decided to do this one, just to disperse those colors, all the colors that I enjoy around the canvas. What I'm looking for for my early layers is just some texture. And I like to get full coverage on a canvas before I start putting my design down. Usually, this time I decided to start sketching in the design as soon as I got those early layers, I had an idea of what I wanted to put down on the canvas and I got all excited. And so I started sketching in. So you can vary your technique. Um, usually I put down a few layers before I put those final top coats on. So I do a lot of underpainting. This time I did a few layers, then sketched in my design. Again, it depends on what you want to do. But as I went through, I continued using fluid acrylic and I used a regular body white acrylic paint to mix. And that's what I did throughout this painting. A lot of water. I moved the canvas to different angles um, so that I could get 
um, the drips and everything dispersed evenly and just had an opportunity for every, every inch of that canvas to experience some texture and layers. Starting these canvases to me is always the most fun. And so when I did that, I really took the time to go slow, to, you know, listen to nature, to really pay attention to how I felt during this process, which I feel is really important. I enjoyed the process of holding that paintbrush, putting that pigment onto the canvas and things like that. Um, I hope that when you're creating like this, you really take the time to realize what an incredible blessing this is to create. We get the joy of that, which you know what? Not a lot of people do. So I think it's wonderful when we can create a painting like that and um, feel the satisfaction of bringing new art into the world. Some logistics when painting outside. Um, you want for me, it's a hat. I'm sorry, I need to, this skin does not love sun. <laughs> um, and so um, a hat can protect you from the sun, but also when you're looking at colors, um, you really wanna be cognizant of how the sun is hitting your canvas because it can change how those colors for the paint look to you, especially if you're wearing sunglasses or something like that. So I try and wear a large hat. Um, I try and avoid sunglasses if I can, but um, if I can't, I take them off frequently and really see how the colors are coming together. For the painting that I'm working on today, I had an idea of what I wanted to do, but I kind of let things happen. And so I started outside for several days. I was able to get a lot of background layers. And that was really great because then all the messy parts of painting large were done outside. So I didn't have to worry about making a mess in my studio or getting stuff on the rug or any of those logistics that we deal with. Um, now, another element of working large is that you do need to take several steps back frequently so that you can see how this picture is developing. It's great to paint up close on a large canvas, but when you are, you know, doing this over several minutes or hours, it can um, make your perspective a little bit different. You need to take a step back and more than you do with a regular size picture because you need to give your eye that distance. You can take the time to take a step back, look at what's developing, look what stands out to you and you know that will help you then as you then move forward and, and continue to work on the painting. So take several steps back and take breaks so that you can stretch and really take a look at that painting. So it doesn't become overwhelming. It's still a joy to do. If you're not used to painting large, um, it, it can be intimidating. And you know what? Don't push yourself. Um, one thing I like to do is I like to really, once I get into this painting, I will go and just continue to go and, you know, work for several hours and not take breaks because I just love it, right? But there will always be a part of a large painting, I find personally, that um, you'll get to a place and it'll just be, you don't know where you're going next. It, it feels off, it feels ugly. I call it the ugly stage. Every artist knows what I'm talking about. It, it It's just a place where you need to get a little distance, literally, you need to take a step back, you need to look at it differently. And that's when I usually take a day or two, I put it aside, I do another project, I do something else. Painting large like that can be very intimidating because you're really engaging your senses. You're, you know, you're, you're using your body in a different way. The images are larger, you're close to it and things like that. So when you get to that point, if it happens, your, your experience might be different and that's fine. When you get to that point though, if that happens to you, just give yourself some space, take some time away from the painting and step away from it. And then when you come back to it, really slowly move forward and look at what you've got on that canvas. You might begin to see things a little bit differently. Large paintings need the space. Um, they need to, you know, that distance where your eye can really adjust and look at all the elements you have on there. So if you have a, a point, you know, don't give up on that painting. If you have a point where you're stuck, just give it a day or two, then go back to it and go gently, go little pieces of the painting 
um, little, you know, sections little by little until you continue to build. And then you'll get to a point um, where you'll just see it all come together and you'll get excited and want to finish it. Painting large can really give you a sense of accomplishment. Um, for some reason, large painting works can fill you with satisfaction in a way that, you know, a smaller one cannot. And I feel that's the way when you're a viewer of art as well. When you go to museums, aren't you naturally drawn to those large works? There's something about that that really draws you in. It, it becomes larger than life. It creates that world of possibility that I love to create when I'm making something. So um, I would say get the biggest canvas you can find. Get something that's large, like a board. Um, if you can't, uh, you know, find a canvas. Um, and paint large and stretch yourself and challenge yourself to do something larger than you've ever worked on. Um, if you're painting outside, in addition, those two elements combined are really satisfying. Take some time to pay attention to nature, what's going on around you, the birds chirping and things like that. And it can really help inspire the image that you end up putting on your canvas. I think painting large is a great way to create a world of hope and possibility. And I can't wait to see what you create. Thank you.